Hey everybody, welcome back to another daily drop here on TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones, and the topic today again: Carolina basketball. Seth Trumbull, the sophomore wing guard from Wisconsin, has entered his name into the transfer portal. He will find a new basketball home. I know this came as a surprise to some people, a lot of disappointment with others, but I'll shed some understanding on it and talk a little bit about Seth and my covering him for two years as I dive into this uh, topic. Before I do so, quick reminder, you would have known that Seth Trimble was likely headed to the portal. Basically, it wasn't done deal as reported by the great David Sisk on our basketball message board, blue heaven, but, or excuse me, four corners, but you would have known that the two guys that we reported a last week that were considering it. And it was likely expected were James Oconquo and Seth Trimble. And guess what? James Oconquo and Seth Trimble are in the portal. You would have known about this a week ago before it happened. If you were a premium subscriber, or if you are a premium subscriber, TarHillIllustrated.com. It's just $8.33 a month for a one-year subscription to our site. That's it. Go through a drive through Get the smallest meal on there. Unless it's a happy meal, and that's probably close. $8.33 a month, guys. And you can have all this information at your fingertips because if you're just a consumer of our podcast, that we don't only put so much information out on these. We have a thousand times more information on our website. We had seven front page content items on Tuesday, April 9th. This is almost two weeks after the Tarios eliminated from the NCAA tournament. Just getting back into spring practice. Seven front page items. That's not to mention some of the other stuff. That, were, that was on the boards as well. And David posted some pretty good information late tonight. I'm recording this after midnight, Wednesday morning, Tuesday night. Okay, Seth Trimble. Seth is a player that needs to be on the court. He's a guy that is a 30-plus minute a game guy at this stage in his career. I'm not sure he would have been that guy at North Carolina. Some people have said to me today, AJ, Seth Trimble is running from the competition. Some people say Seth Trimble just isn't good enough. I say BS to both simply because what people need to understand in the changing landscape of college athletics, where kids are not hamstrung or nailed to the wall in a certain program with very little freedom of movement, they recognize the window of opportunity in life is so small to play college basketball. Right now, since Trimble came in after all the COVID stuff, he has just four years. He doesn't have the luxury of a fifth year like some other guys are taking, have taken. Some have been able to put it into uh, turn it into a sixth year if they had a red shirt year or, uh, and then they had a COVID year in which they played. Jalen Withers will be that kind of player. That's what Cormac Ryan was, six-year guy. So for Seth Trimble, he's operating the mindset of just four years. So if he comes back to Carolina for one more ride, then he's only got one year. Now, I will say this, and I've gone on record as saying this before. I do think the NCAA is going to pass a fifth year of eligibility. I think they need to pass a fifth year of eligibility for a few reasons. Number one, this is college. Most college students use a fifth year to graduate. Number two, look at how much better college football and college basketball in particular has been in recent years when it's been older. There is no shame in being that fifth-year guy now. There was almost shame in some respects eight years ago being a senior. It's like, you're a senior? Man, you're not good enough. Now you've got the extra year because of COVID. You've got NIL which gives guys more reason to stick around. And you've got portal, which is freedom of movement, so they can find situations that really enhance their experience. I give you Brady Manick as exhibit A. He had a wonderful experience at Oklahoma, which is a good program. But look at what he got in Chapel Hill. Look at what Cormac Ryan got for a year in Chapel Hill. Other guys want to find their perfect experience or close to perfect experience as well. Seth Trimble has had two years in Chapel Hill. 
So he's only got two years left right now. I do believe another year will be added while he's in school. So he'll probably get a fifth year if he so chooses. That's my projection. But right now he doesn't have that knowledge because it's not there. So he needs to think about what's best for him. What does he want out of his college experience? He's gotten two years at UNC. His brother had three and then left after the 2015 season. The irony being J.P. Tokoto's last college game was in Los Angeles in the Sweet 16. Seth Trimble's last college game in North Carolina was in the Sweet 16 in Los Angeles. Same building, different name, Staples Center, Crypto.com Arena, same building, same part of the tournament. So in Seth Carolina's losing a great defensive player, in Seth Carolina's losing a wonderful energy guy, and Seth Carolina is losing a fantastic teammate. I told the story recently about how I was right behind the team after they lost to NC State in the ACC championship. I couldn't go through the other tunnel because it was on the other side of the court and there was all kinds of stuff going on. It would have taken forever. So I just followed the team through their tunnel. And Seth was at the back of the line and head down the whole time, a moping stride. He was disappointed. He wanted to win an ACC championship. First player I talked to in the locker room in Los Angeles after they lost Alabama was Seth Trimble. Go watch that video here on TarHillIllustrated.com. Very emotional. Very upset. Didn't want to lose. For those of you who say the front of the jersey doesn't mean anything to him, I can confirm to you with firsthand knowledge it means a lot to him. But that doesn't mean it's in his best interest to stay there for two more years. A lot of us who love teams and are passionate every year about those teams, we're not faced with that actual decision. So it's a lot easier to say, how can a guy leave North Carolina? That's not our decision. That's not our life. That's not our only two years remaining in that window. That window closes fast, real fast. And for Seth, it's halfway over. So Carolina is also losing a guy who really improved offensively. I'm going to throw a couple of numbers at you just so we can lay it out there other than just, hey, he I remember him being pretty good. Here's what he did. His freshman year, he was one for six from three-point range. He was terrified to shoot the ball. There were times I was critical of Hubert Davis that he would put Seth in the game but not have him on the ball. And teams wouldn't guard him. They wouldn't guard him. If you put Seth on the ball, you have to guard the ball. And then you put one of your other shooters like RJ or Caleb off the ball. Suddenly a team has to, the opponent has to defend at least four guys then because Armando was on the court as opposed to having to defend three when Seth was on the court, not on the ball. But guess what? This past year, 13 for 31, 41.9%. Teams had to guard him. But he had the ability to take it to the basket. But there was a time in the middle of the year where people in the media and some fans were talking about, man, Seth doesn't finish enough. He's not getting the ball to fall in the, uh, uh, through the room. He's not taking the contact as well as he should. I think he just happened to miss for a stretch. But what did he do? He developed that little mid-range game. And I talked to him about this in late February early March, where he had that 2-3 dribble pull up just inside the free throw line jumper, and it was money. Remember when he hit a couple of those at Duke? Big time shot, and that's something he developed during the course of the year. His uh, So that's something that he added to his game in season. And oh, by the way, he went from averaging, what was it, uh, 1.2 point points a game to 5.2 points a game. He went from 16 minutes, or excuse me, a turnover. I'm reading some of this stuff because I can't remember all of it, even though Bruce Young thinks I do. A turnover every 16.1 minutes as a freshman, turnover every 27.2 minutes as a sophomore. Free throw shooting went up 12%. His playing time doubled. He was integral in several important wins. How about the Florida State game back in early December? The Tar Heels did not play well. And Seth Trimble goes in there and just gives him a huge spark with the press. He played 14 minutes that game and was plus 24. So on a personal note, I enjoyed covering Seth. I enjoyed seeing him come out of his shell this year. He went from a guy who didn't say a whole lot last year to a guy who was leaning back in front of the locker and 
and just having a conversation after a game as an important player who had tremendous confidence because he knew every time he got on the court, he positively affected the game. And now he's going to take that somewhere else. What can he be somewhere else? I think he can be a 30 minute guy. I think he can be a 12 to 14 point guy in the right offense. I think he can do that as a lockdown defender. A, an excellent transition player. I think he can be a better rebounder than we've seen him at North Carolina. I think he could be a good weak side offensive rebounder. I think he can be a rip and run rebounder on the defensive end. But we're not going to see whatever else he becomes at North Carolina because he's in the portal. We can speculate what this means. If it means R.J. Davis is coming back or if he just thought that Ian Jackson is going to get penciled in and he's not going to see the court – I'm not going to go there with that. Some of that stuff we have on our message board that I was talking about earlier, but this is very fluid. So I'd be a fool to say something concretely in one of these drops, knowing how fluid everything is and how certain things have not fully been decided yet as of this recording, which is now 1.51 in the morning, Wednesday morning. So Seth Trumbull in the portal. Second, Tar Heel will do so. It's the, they're the two players that we reported a week ago were likely entering the portal. It's now happened. I'm not saying that nobody else is. Again, it's a very fluid situation, but we saw this coming. We had an article ready. I'm sorry to see him go because I enjoyed him. Uh, hopefully, he keeps those pink shoes. If he hears this, he knows what I'm talking about. He Don't tear them. He was concerned about them tearing. He's a good guy. He's someone that Carolina fans would have enjoyed seeing him for two more years and enjoyed listening to. I thought he had a chance to be a good spokesman for the team as well. So we'll follow what he does elsewhere. Wish him the best. I enjoyed covering him. And uh, he's going to be an exciting player wherever he goes. So what this also does, I'll throw this last thing out there. With Armando, Cormac, and Paxson gone, the eligibility's up. And now two players in the portal – that's five openings. And remember, they only had used 11 scholarships last year. So technically, that's seven guys they can bring in. They have three freshmen coming in, Ian Jackson, Drake Powell, and James Brown. So there are four spots now that they can fill through the portal if they want to. And that's without knowing what other decisions could be made. So I do expect North Carolina to bring in a couple of uh, transfers from the portal. No doubt about it. Will Hubert use all 13 scholarships next year? I don't know. We'll see. He could get very creative with the portal and get some younger guys with some length at the end of their career to come in and maybe make this their destination stop to see how it goes. There's a lot of options for Hubert, but he is very choosy. He's not throwing a wide net out there. And when he does throw something out there, a net after a certain player, we always have it on our board. I'm going to push that because if you want to know what's going on, you got to sign up because we are on top of it. David is locked in as much as you can be. He knows what's going on. And uh, all of the things that he reports are met. Our sources are met. So come on over, be a member, and you can be a Tar Heel insider too. If you're excited about the direction the program's going, even though Seth Trimble is now gone, go ahead and click like on this podcast. If you enjoyed Seth's athletic ability and defense and his dunks in which he flew forever in the air, go ahead and click like on this video. If you're going to sign up for THI, click like on the video. And by the way, let your friends know that we're here, not just the videos, but our, our site as well. Get your, if they're diehard and passionate, get them to come over. And you can also gift the site for people. It's just $8.33 a month for a one-year subscription. I'm going to keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it because we want more people to sign up because we want you guys to have as much information about your team, not just basketball, but football and recruiting as well as you possibly can. I'm AJ, and I appreciate you stopping by.